ZDDP stands got some big old name, zinc diphosphate, say, big old name. But the point about it is it's zinc attached to a phosphate molecule. That's all it is, okay? And the important part about zinc, now, there is a great little loop course that Amsoil has where they talk about fundamentals of lubrication. Okay, if you go to the loop page, I got it posted up there where I wrote an article for uh, Max Torque and I wrote one for Co Professional Magazine, all those people, and it's about lubrication fundamentals and it talks about lubrication regimes, they're called. We got three of these things we actually talk about. It's called full fluid flow lubrication. That's when I got enough fluid that the whatever the moving metallic parts are, they're just separated by the fluid, right? In other words, that oil, if you look at it, here's the two pieces and there's oil between them. That's full fluid flow separation, right? That's wonderful to have that. It's not always there. The other part is called boundary lubrication. I got wonderful lubrication, uh, boom! It's no longer got a fluid in between them. What do I do now? Okay, well, I depend upon the fact that I don't want to go steel to steel. And that zinc that I put in there, zinc is a soft, you know, soft metal. Zinc's coating the surface. Instead of going steel to steel, I go zinc to zinc. So I now have a metallic lubricant called zinc. Lubricates me anytime my full fluid flow breaks down, and I do not. That's called boundary lubrication. Okay? The third type, I hit real quick because it's a little more complex, and it's called elastohydrodynamic lubrication. And you don't even have to worry about this except just think of it in this aspect. A ball bearing, right? This is a ball bearing. And when a ball bearing sits on a race, right, that's where it rolls. It rolls on what's called a race. And if it's a actual uh, roller bearing, it's a, like a little roller, and it rolls on a race. Think of a race track, right? It's rolling on that. The two pieces are separated. You got a race, an outer race, and an inner race, and they're separated by either balls or rollers. And that's how you make a bearing, right? Okay. What lubricates those rollers? Is it a big, thick, full of oil? No. It's a little light coating on those, right? A little light coating of oil. But what happens is the pressure, because of the point, is so small, the area that the roller rolls on, that it creates so many thousands of pounds <coughs> per square inch, because there ain't no square inch. <laughs> it's a fraction of an inch that it's rolling on, that the lubricant trapped between those two pieces of metal is under such pressure it acts like a solid, and the ball bearing deforms, the ball bearing deforms the race. That's called an elastic deformity. That's where the name elasto. Hydrodynamic means the oil was a hydraulic force that is in motion moving dynamic. Elastro hydrodynamic. It rolls on that surface and it deforms that metal surface. That's why when bearings fail a lot of times, they flake, meaning so much pressure was on that, they lost their lubrication, and they now pressurize that metal so hard that it flakes off. That's what it's doing. Okay, now, back to the important one that we have in an automobile all the time that we really worry about is boundary lubrication. Because boundary lubrication takes place in some very important places, the camshaft. Boundary lubrication, when that thing was sliding, that was boundary lubrication, but it couldn't keep the oil or the zinc on there because it runs over it so much it scraped everything off. So it's running now metal to metal. There's not, not enough zinc left. But in these older cars that we all loved growing up, these muscle cars, that same lifter I showed you looks like this. And you got this thing here in it. And here's the camshaft here, right? Whatever. It's solid, it's flat, it does not have a roller. That's why it's called a flat tappet. It comes to the edge of that camshaft and it hits and that camshaft lifts it and it's just a running on oil and goes off. There is no roller. So you say, well, why on the one that has a roller does it wear out? And these guys wouldn't because the oil that was made for this had about 1,200 parts per million zinc and phosphorus, okay? So the modern oil, the SN rated modern oil is limited to 800 parts per million if you get that. 
And so what's happened is we've made new oil assuming that every engine has a roller can, has rollers, and they don't. So when you hear people talking about what's important about this ZDDP in these older cars, it's that interface right there that's called boundary lubrication. And if you don't have enough zinc, you'll eat the can. You'll eat the can. So motorcycles, they have flat tappets. Yeah. Oh, they have rollers now? They have rollers on Harley. Okay. had rollers since the 30s. I stand corrected. For years. So, but they do what you said. Yeah, they will cut them. They'll still do the same. But I've seen a lot of personal that does the same. The little bearing and the bottom. The roller failed on it? I that camera. Oh, so understand if you know why when a guy says to you, "Oh, well, yeah, I've got a, uh, you know, I got a beautiful uh, preserve '69 Barracuda. Uh, why, why can't I just go to Kmart and buy some oil?" You say, "Yes, you can." And uh, I have a good mechanic that likes to make money off these. <laughs> but and, and you can give a good explanation for what's going on. It's got Tappets, they go over, and you've got to have the best oil for it, okay? The other one I had written down was, um, I just want to just touch for a second and tell you guys, the new CVT fluid, okay, that CVT fluid is an excellent product. And what you need to tell some of your shops, if you make sure if you've got shops, they understand they need a CVT fluid because some of them think they can use regular transmission fluid in a CVT and they can't. No, no, you can for five minutes. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so the CVT is a good fluid. Amazon finally came out. And listen, the reason they did is because all a bunch of these new Hondas and new Nissans and new Hyundais, they've all got these CVT transmissions. So for a long time, Amazon thought the CVT would go away because it's, the early ones are such pieces of junk. How could you possibly put those in a reasonable car? But the new ones that are in the the Hondas and stuff are excellent transmissions. They're going to be around for a long time. They're going to need CVT fluid, okay? So it's a good product they brought out. And next time, next meeting, I'm going to go into Euro oils and what saps are and, and how, yeah, European oils we have. And they have saps, which stands for sulfated ash, phosphorus, and sulfur. Okay, that's additives in the oil. The Europeans have special limits and special categories. We need to take advantage of that. We're one of the only companies making those three categories of oil. We need to take advantage of it. I'm going to talk about that next time. And I'm also going to talk about Dexos, what Dexos means and, and why we pay attention to it.